I'm starting this vlog on the road. I am headed up, my family, we are headed up uh, to Sun Peaks for winter break. And I realized that it's about to be January 1st. We're spending New Year's up there and I need to start my next vlog. So last year I talked about the fact that I have read a book every single year since I've been born, which was 1990. And I haven't had a five star for every single one of those years. I think there's somewhere between seven and 10 years that I'm missing, starting with the year I was born. So I am kicking off a series this year where I read books from that year, each year in order until I get a five star. So on our way out of town, I made my husband stop at the bookstore, just run in and find Jurassic Park because I've always known that that's something that was published the year I was born. It's like one of the only books that I know for sure would pop up on a list if I was searching. I don't wanna give you my TBR at the beginning of the video. I just wanna start and I just wanna read and I just wanna film because if I make a list, then there's an expectation that I'm going to read multiple books. And the hope is for these vlogs, I guess not all of them, that the hope is that I read one book and the vlog is over. The goal is that there's a mix every single time. So maybe one time it'll take me 10 books and two months. And in another, it'll just take me one book and one day and the vlog is over. And eventually I'll be able to say, I have had a five star read published in every single year I have been alive. He should be back any second. The bookstore said there was two in stock. Here he comes. He's no so busy in there. I've also decided that this is gonna be my members book club read for the season and we're gonna watch the movie together the weekend we get back. I've definitely seen the movie, but I was very young. I've never rewatched. I've also seen Jurassic World, but I couldn't tell you a single thing about it. to the place that we're staying. It's very cute in here. I don't know why I decided to show you with my face blocking the entire thing, but it's a ski out at Sun Peaks. So basically going on the balcony. We're right on the mountain. So you can just walk out and immediately go ski and snowboard. So the boys are still out doing that. Where do I wanna place you? I got like 30 pages into Jurassic Park and I think like maybe I should have watched the movie. Well, it doesn't work because we're reviewing the book together and watching the movie together in the same live show. But part of me feels like I should have watched the movie first because I don't remember if what we're learning about was even in the film because we're not like at the park. We're not following people arriving and the dinosaurs are already a part of it. Like we're way, well, I don't know how far back we are, but we're at the discovery of the dinosaurs. There are these like little attacks happening with various people like having allergies, they think, to what they think are lizards and all of the people, the scientists are like, oh yeah, it's just a lizard. But as they figure it out more, we're just discovering that it's dinosaurs. So I'm interested to know how much of the movie, I'm assuming like the movie just takes the action scenes from the book, or maybe it does flash back to the origin story. I don't know, but I'm having a fine time. I like learning about this stuff. And I'll probably check in with you later tonight after another snowboard session. And then we have a dinner to go to. This place is very little and cozy. Liam's gonna sleep out here. Here's the actual bedroom. I have a video to film, so I'm thinking I might sit here and do it at some point tomorrow. But we've got a kitchen and a bathroom, a door, all the things you expect. Happy New Year, everybody. I somehow, a couple days later, have still only gotten 100 pages in, probably because, you know, I'm busy doing other things. I definitely thought I was gonna make more time to read though, but there's still this evening and tomorrow morning. But basically the story has gotten more familiar to what I remember from the movie. They have arrived, like we've met the crazy old man who has the dinosaur park and we have some different people getting on a plane and traveling to the location, not really knowing what they're about to encounter and then seeing the dinosaurs from the plane, learning about the situation. And then we've met some of the children who were there. I probably shouldn't update you after I've had a couple mimosas. Anyway, I'm a little bit tired, but I'm gonna try to read like, 
I don't know, 50 or 100 more pages before I go to sleep. They do fireworks early here, so like all the kids can participate and whatnot, so it's only like 9 p.m. Hello, hello. I haven't seen you in a week. I don't know why I started clapping every time I like turn on the camera lately. Every time I go to edit it, I'm like, what are you doing? Okay, I haven't seen you in a week. Here's why. I started feeling bad while we were on vacation. I didn't film anything. I didn't really do anything the last two days that we were there. We had our like three hour drive home and I just got progressively sicker on that drive home. And when we got home, I was fully blown like <laughs> sick. And then I just got my shit together and I still filmed the video I needed to post. And then I was planning on filming my everything I've read this year video the next day. And I posted my video and everyone was, thank you, everyone who <laughs> was like, just take a day, like relax, whatever. And so I did that. And uh, those last two days, I <laughs> like, oh my God. And it's funny because I feel like kind of fine energy wise. I feel mentally fine, but like my lungs have never felt this much pain. And when I lie down, I start drowning. <laughs> I haven't read like anything so i picked up the audiobook of jurassic park at this point like i know it's not going to be a five star so i need to pick something else that i'm going to read after this so i'm prepared as soon as i finish it i just like nobody thought that an action focused book was going to be five stars for me it was just for the fun of it all but while i was um listening to the audiobook i organized all of the books that i need to set up for the everything i read this year video who knows when i'm gonna be able to film that because like I feel fine right now and I keep waking up and thinking I'm gonna film it but I know that it takes like six hours and I'm gonna lose my voice. I'm gonna have a million coughing fits. The editing of it is gonna be super annoying. Like even right now I just expelled everything in my body and I can feel it like start filling up my throat again. And so when I posted that video somebody commented they were like oh that's COVID and I was like word? Took a COVID test. Yeah, I have COVID. I've never had COVID. I thought I had COVID two years ago. I was filming like a 24 hour vlog. And in it, I said, this is turning into a COVID vlog because I woke up clearly with what I assumed was COVID because like everybody around me had COVID and then it turned out to not be COVID, but whatever. So this is um, now my life. No one else has it. I'm just staying to myself and relaxing and trying to read. I think I might just finish this on audio, but the fun of this 1990 vlog is no longer here. Did it ever really start? Um, what do I want to talk about? Here's me in 1990. <laughs> Here's where I started. Then I was born in March of 1990. I'm going to make myself a 1990 playlist today so I can listen to all the things that were out the year that I was born. But the thing we really need to do is figure out what the next book is going to be. So I think the first thing I need to do for all of these videos is just go to my Goodreads list and see if I already have something from the year that I'm looking for. And then I'll go to like a list on the internet of popular 1990 or whatever year it's gonna be reads. Oh, I do have two things from 1990 I might want to read. I actually didn't think I would have anything. I have Woman at Point Zero, which I can't remember why I added it, but here it says it was published in 1975 originally, but here it says 1990. So maybe the translated version. I don't know what should count and what shouldn't as a publication. And then I have a bell hooks yearning race, gender, and cultural politics, which says 1999, but then also 1990. <laughs> Probably different editions. I think in this moment, the right decision is to order the bell hooks because I've read a bell hooks before it was five stars. I can't imagine the type of like critique and theory books that she writes not getting a five star. So this does feel like a book that I should read at the end of a video, kind of as my what do you call it? I don't know, ace in the hole that like is a guaranteed win and then read a bunch of goofy, silly things that other people want me to read along the way. But my content is already such a mess this month because I'm essentially a week behind on my reading and I still have a lot of goals. So if we can end this video <laughs> quickly, like that would be great. Not that I'm not having a good time. I don't dislike anything that's happening in here. I, it has definitely become what I remember from the movie and it's become action packed and we're following all the things that I would expect to follow. I definitely didn't remember everything that happened in here and I don't know how much is in the synopsis or if you can really spoil a book like Jurassic Park. But what's interesting to learn is that the way that the people created the dinosaurs is they took DNA from like other creatures and stuff. And the way that they built this island is 
with only female dinosaurs because they, so they could never breed so they were fully in control of the genetics and everything and then it turns out some of the DNA that was used from other creatures is from other creatures that like can breed in other ways and so they end up breeding and when they're doing this count of all the dinosaurs they have all of this technology and all these computer programs and they're constantly tracking the security and they're really on top of things but um what's his face dr grant comes in oh my gosh there are all of these charts and stuff that i missed listening to the audiobook but he comes in and he's like the way that you're tracking the dinosaurs is only confirming what you already know you didn't set up your program to expect anything unexpected so every time it's counting the dinosaurs every day and it's like you have 300 you have 300 everything's cool it's never going above and beyond what it's been programmed to do so there are actually way more dinosaurs on the island than they realize because they've been secretly breeding without the all the doctors and scientists knowledge and so that's when things go off the rails is there are dinosaurs in different areas where they aren't expected to be and um the technology is not perfect so now we're at the point where all the people are in the car doing the tour around the island and the power like cuts and there's a big t-rex and the kids are like lost on the island i really hope none of that would be a spoiler keep it to myself from here i think there are going to be a lot of um gruesome deaths to come but since it's a series and since the movies are a series it's kind of like you know the direction that the story is going to go and who's going to survive and what their goals are going to be for the future can we talk about the range that 1990 had we got thunderstruck by acdc and you can't touch this by mc hammer in the same year it was also the year of suicide blonde ice ice baby and can i kick it and hard to handle which is a song i fell in love with watching a show about casting the grease um play that had to be when i was like 12 years old i was obsessed with that show and speaking of suicide blonde i'm pretty sure the first time i heard that song was actually a cover as well because it was on rockstar in excess Ooh, the nostalgia for music based reality shows that i used to eat up that i would never watch now anyway i was going to watch a 1990 movie today but we decided to watch leave the world behind instead oh my god it was so good i'm just behind on movies so i wanted to do that it's one of my favorite books and i loved it i also finished jurassic park and i'm giving it four stars which is great news i think this is exactly if you are already interested in high action thrillers like this I can't see why this wouldn't be a five star for you that's not often what I'm looking for so I was reading it for different reasons I think if the book utilized Ellie a little bit more and didn't make Lex so um insufferable I could have loved it a little bit more maybe it could have been a 4.5 I just feel like the female characters didn't get their full um capability at least in this book i wasn't quite expecting the ending but maybe it's because i don't remember the ending from the movie but i'm very excited to watch it with the members next weekend and where did i put it i got my hands on yearning i got to page 20 this is her fourth book crossing disciplinary parent di disciplinary boundaries in major debates on postmodern theory cultural criticism and the politics of race and gender i feel as though I can't remember perfectly but I know that I gave her last book five stars I don't know what order they were published in but she does reference that book in this book so obviously this came after and perhaps that is why I'm feeling the way that I'm feeling but that book to me if I'm remembering correctly was far more accessible than this one granted I am only 20 pages in and maybe it's because my mind is still not fully like functioning but this sentence made me like have to stop and just like bookmark it and close it because I didn't think I was comprehending what it said. Focus on good and bad images may be more fundamentally connected to the Western metaphysical dualism that is the philosophical underpinning of racist and sexist domination than with radical efforts to reconceptualize black cultural identities. Concurrently, focus on canon formation legitimizes the creative work of Black writers in academic circles while reinforcing white hegemonic authorial canonicity. I said, what? Obviously, bell hooks is too smart for me. Reading it out loud made more sense than when I read it in my head the first time. So maybe that means I need to read it out loud to myself. Maybe I need to take it slower. 
I don't think it means I need the audiobook. I don't think I found the audiobook of her last one. Anyway, it just means I'm not gonna read this in like the two days that I had allotted it in my mind. reading this for a couple days now and haven't updated you. I haven't been feeling well. I've been trying to film and edit content. Obviously the tiny house that I have is full of sick people, but I need to update you because I am starting to feel like this could be a five star. I just read two essays back to back that were some of the best I've read and definitely needed the ones that came before to have the context to understand the conversations that she wanted to have in those essays. This one called Aesthetic Inheritances, History Worked by Hand. Um, was partially about quilting and the art of quilting and it's something that I have been thinking about trying for one of the videos where I try out a new craft, a new hobby. I don't have the space for it right now but it's something that I've been thinking about a lot since I even started the art series and I've never really thought about the origin of quilting or how different people, cultures, groups engage with like artistry differently. It had a lot of different conversations, talked about many things. One of them was how um, naturally oppressed groups stories are told, um, mistold by white folks, how black art has been perceived and written about throughout history, and then the real clear experience of black American art. There's obviously care and talent and pride in the work and the quilts that um, enslaved women made and it was they, they were they made different quilts for those they had to and they made different quilts for themselves and their families and how it was seen as lesser and it was seen as less intentional and just by happenstance that the, this beautiful art would come from these groups of people as if it wasn't done like with purpose. Obviously the folks that she's specifically talking about in here had such less access and were forced into like having stuff stolen from them and how they utilized what wasn't taken away. I just really loved the purpose of that essay and how it was written and then immediately after it, I think it was immediately after, um, was one about Zora Neale Hurston and that's somebody who I have read a book from, Our Eyes Are Watching God. I didn't read it in school or anything so I wonder if I would have learned things about her life if that's the kind of experience other people have had reading it in a classroom setting, but I don't know anything about her and Bell Hooks just taught me so much about this woman's life and the way that she wrote books, how she was essentially a cultural critic before that term even existed, how she was pushing into spaces where people thought she didn't belong, and how she manipulated people into getting to write the stories she wanted to write. And with that it brought in a conversation, well, I highlighted so much on this page, um, and throughout other essays too about the black experience and the opportunity, the lack of opportunity to have the same freedom to just like take time to have like a passion project, especially in this time that she's talking about, but this bleeds into publishing still today. The idea that certain groups of people can only write a certain type of story. Bell Hooks herself and various other people want the opportunity to write something experimental, but they can't because it's a privilege to be able to focus on something that you don't know will sell by the end of it. I'm going to finish this up today with 60 more pages. I have no idea what else she's going to talk about. I feel like this has a clear theme, but it also is a little bit chaotic. We're jumping in so many different places and there's not really a thread tying everything together beyond like the giant scope that all of her books have being under women's studies and black studies. I almost forgot to wear my 1990 shirt in this video, but I'm absolutely calling Yearning a five star. No hesitation. I would recommend it equally to uh, Feminist Theory. She has a couple other things I should probably read in my lifetime. Happy to have consumed these. Considering the things, especially that I was reading um, in like a 1995 video I did recently, nonfiction wise, none of them hold up. Like none of them were applicable current day or if giving information about the time that it was written didn't really feel like that interesting. So the fact that this was written 33 years ago and I say holds up and will still add value to people's lives is impressive. And I don't know that I would have had that perspective if I hadn't just read a whole bunch of like terrible 1980 books. Even though the goal was different, they're by different people, the whole tone was different, whatever. Something that I absolutely love to read is media critique. And so the fact that she got into a bunch of movies in this 
final like third, even ones that I haven't seen, the way that she explained them and the purpose of these films in their time and the stereotypes and the things that she gained from them but also wanted to critique about them. That's just something that I love to read. It mentioned Wings of Desire and then Do the Right Thing, the way that people engage with media and the necessity of critiquing things that you love to fully appreciate them. I also really liked the last section. It's like this interview style towards the end too, like a back and forth um, that was really interesting. It was Black Women and Men Partnership in the 1990s and just her views on so many things. Uh, part that I highlighted that I don't remember highlighting is if we're serious about acknowledging and affirming other people's humanity, then we are committed to trusting and believing that they are forever in process. Growth, development, maturation happens in stages. People grow, develop, and mature along the lines in which they are taught. Disenabling critique and contemptuous feedback hinders. Her insights just about people and life is kind of top tier. This is really valuable to read. And now I just want to know what your thoughts are on this series as a whole, especially like the um, marketing of it. When you see the thumbnail, do you feel like it's going to spoil the video if I put the books that I read or was considering reading in the thumbnail? Or like me, do you want to be able to click on it not knowing how many books I read until it ends? I really like kicking off the series with one where I just read two books, even though this video did not go as in-depth with like me engaging with culture from that time as I wanted to, but I'm ill. The next video that I'm going to do next month is 1993. So if you want to let me know your favorite book or popular books from 1993 that you would like me to read, no guarantees, but I would love to hear about them in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. I get to add something to my list and I am on the journey of finding a five-star publish in every year that I was born. See you next time. Bye!